Welcome to the 2016 ASHP Foundation Literature Awards presentation and breakfast. Since 1971, the program has recognized 675 authors and 159 articles published in the biomedical literature. Let's meet the latest awardees to join this prestigious group. The Student Research Award goes to Nicholas Britt and his co-authors. Their article, Comparison of the Effectiveness and Safety of Linezolid and Daptomycin in Vancomycin-Resistant Enterococcal Bloodstream Infection, a National Cohort Study of Veterans Affairs Patients, was published in Clinical Infectious Diseases. Vancomycin-Resistant Enterococcus is a common healthcare-associated pathogen with very limited treatment options. VRE bloodstream infections in particular are associated with high mortality, about 30-35% to in most studies. The most promising agents for the treatment of these infections are linazolid and daptomycin. Prior to this study, neither agent had shown better outcomes in the treatment of VRE bacteremia, primarily due to limitations in sample size of those studies. By utilizing national clinical databases of patient-level information within the Integrated Veterans Affairs Healthcare Network, which consists of over 150 hospitals, we were able to overcome this issue. As pharmacists, we are interested in optimizing the use of medications to improve patient outcomes. In this study, we demonstrated that daptomycin improved cure rates and overall survival compared to linazolid in the treatment of VRE bacteremia and thus represents a potentially life-saving intervention. The Pharmacy Practice Research Award goes to Mitchell Buckley and his co-authors. Their article, Impact of a Clinical Pharmacist Stress Ulcer Prophylaxis Management Program on Inappropriate Use in Hospitalized Patients, was published in the American Journal of Medicine. Several studies have demonstrated a significant proportion of hospitalized patients are inappropriately started and continued on acid suppression therapy throughout inpatient transitions of care, including hospital discharge. Given the magnitude of inadvertent, inappropriate continuation of acid suppression therapy in hospitalized patients without any indication of use has significant economic implications. Also, the growing concerns of these agents increasing the risk of several deleterious outcomes including enteric as well as respiratory infections warrants prudent use. We chose to focus our research on the economic and clinical impact of utilizing and empowering clinical pharmacists to manage therapy as a viable and more importantly sustainable solution to a problem that was widespread throughout our entire hospital. The success of our program resulted in drastic reductions of inappropriate utilization. Furthermore, we realized over $200,000 in annualized cost savings. The significance to the profession of pharmacy is that this research highlights an area of medication management with prescriptive authority to serve as a model to advance the role of pharmacists in direct patient care. Another goal was to publicize our research, which is the first of its kind, so other institutions may adopt our strategy and serve as an opportunity to push the profession forward. Since the publication of this research, several individuals as well as organizations have reached out to us in hopes of replicating our strategy and implementing in their respective institutions. The Drug Therapy Research Award goes to Zachariah Thomas and his co-authors. Their article, A Multi-Center Evaluation of Prolonged Empiric Antibiotic Therapy in Adult ICUs in the United States, was published in Critical Care Medicine. The importance of timely and appropriate antibiotic therapy in critical illness has been firmly established. Unfortunately, the diagnostic uncertainties of infection in the critically ill, coupled with the desire not to miss potential infections, may expose patients to the well-documented risks of unnecessary antibiotic therapy. Re-evaluation of empiric antibiotics within 72 hours is a recommended strategy to balance the desire to start timely antibiotics and lessen the impact of unnecessary therapy. In our clinical experience, however, we often observed that empiric antibiotics were continued beyond this time frame despite a lack of objective evidence of infection. Moreover, emerging data examining prolonged empiric antibiotic therapy, or PEAT, suggests this practice may be harmful. Given the lack of prospective data on the prevalence of PEAT, in collaboration with the Critical Care Pharmacotherapy Trials Network, we conducted a point prevalence study of PEAT in critically ill patients. Through the efforts of many dedicated critical care pharmacist site investigators, we enrolled 998 patients in this study. 
Key findings of our study include that approximately 50% of all empiric antibiotics are continued beyond 72 hours in patients not meeting objective infection criteria. Also, many tools that could potentially lessen the rate of PEAT are not being utilized regularly. It is our hope that these data spur a meaningful conversation regarding prolonged empiricism and that efforts are undertaken to examine the risks and benefits of this common practice. We believe each ICU can potentially collect data on PEAT and implement interventions to curb prolonged empiric antibiotic therapy and thus aid in the preservation of our limited antibiotic armamentarium. The award for innovation and pharmacy practice goes to Paul Milligan and his co-authors. Their article, Multifaceted Approach to Reducing Occurrence of Severe Hypoglycemia in a Large Healthcare System, was published in the American Journal of Health System Pharmacy. The focus of our paper was to describe not only the way we identified hypoglycemia as our number one adverse drug event in our system, but also the process, the detailed process that we use to reduce harm by 80% um, over a few years. I think the impact on pharmacy practice is uh, one, to show that pharmacists are logical leaders of this effort in medication safety, but it couldn't be done alone. I needed the help of, of multiple diabetic educators, nurse specialists, informaticists, etc. I think our contribution to the literature is the process that we use and the tools that we provide in the paper that can be reproduced and utilized by any health system and not only limited to, over, to hypoglycemia but might be, be able to be used for other adverse drug events as well. And this year's award for sustained contributions goes to C. Michael White of the University of Connecticut School of Pharmacy in Stores, Connecticut. Dr. White has served as the co-director of an Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality Evidence-Based Practice Center since 2007, one of only 13 designated centers in North America. His work has been published in JAMA, Lancet, the Annals of Internal Medicine, and Circulation, with research coverage by NBC Nightly News, Good Morning America, BBC, CNN, and other international media outlets. He is an ACCP Young Investigator of the Year, AACP Lyman Award winner, and five-time ASHP Foundation Drug Therapy Research Award recipient. I wanted to conduct research that really had an impact on patients' well-being, and the thing that uh, I found very interesting was trying to decrease adverse effects that could be caused by surgical procedures, by drugs, or by devices. In people who had uh, bypass surgery, for instance, a lot of them get back their physical functioning and they can do things that they hadn't had the ability to do in a long time. It also helps them to live longer, but in a small percentage of people when they have bypass surgery, they'll develop post-operative atrial fibrillation. And that post-operative atrial fibrillation can increase their length of stay, can cause the patients to even develop a stroke or ventricular tachycardia that could be life-threatening. The incidence was very high, with 60% of people developing post-operative atrial fibrillation and around 7% of people developing a stroke. So working with uh, a number of different collaborators, we started the atrial fibrillation suppression trials. And over the course of, uh, uh, of my career, we were able to find that beta blockers reduced post-operative atrial fibrillation and also reduced complications of that atrial fibrillation. Adding amiodarone was able to, uh, two beta blockers was able to reduce those complications even more. And then we helped to do uh, some studies that helped us to better understand why it occurred in the first place and that as part of the surgical procedure you're causing an imbalance inside the heart between uh, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. You're also causing a lot of third spacing of fluids that end up coming back. And So hopefully with that improved knowledge, we can help to generate more targeted therapies going forward. The second research line that I wanted to discuss was about natural products. So natural products are on the market. They're used by millions of people all around the country, but They've never had an assessment that all prescription drugs have to have, an evaluation of their impact on blood pressure 
and their impact on the electrocardiogram before it was used in patients. So we decided to take these natural products and give them the same kind of safety screening for blood pressure effects and electrocardiographic effects that prescription drugs end up going through. And we studied many, many natural products and they all seemed like they had uh, a very good safety profile. But then we ended up looking at Metabolife 356, which was an ephedra containing product. And when we looked at the blood pressure and EKG effects, the increases were, uh, uh, were very high and uh, led us to believe that the product was, uh, was risky. This information was uh, utilized by the FDA um, when they were trying to, uh, to assess the, uh, the impact of ephedra products and ended up being one of the pieces of literature that, uh, that they used in their decision to ban ephedra from the U.S. market. Congratulations to all of this year's ASHP Foundation Literature Awardees.